ask, O oh God, you will move self, O oh God, and let your Holy Spirit take full control. I ask, O oh God, for the moderator, O oh God, that you will use her in the mighty name of Jesus. And, O oh God, as we are here, I ask you in our state that you will stay with us. And when we are about to leave, I ask, O oh God, your Holy Spirit may go before us. And, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, bless us and sanctify us. In no other name, but in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. John Jones and the members of the Mount Carmel Spiritual Baptist Church do sympathize with the believers. We begin our first hymn on the song sheet with your anchor home. With your anchor home in the sound of
verses 25 to 26, read by St. John.
say everything. It's time to mourn and there's a time to dance. It's time to cast away stones and it's time to get stones. It's time to embrace and it's time to refrain from embracing. It's time to gain and it's time to lose. It's time to keep and it's time to throw away. It's time to tear and it's time to soak. It's time to keep silence and there's a time to speak. It's time to love and it's time to hate. It's time of war and there's a time of peace. The God given task, what profit has the broker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in his mind. Also he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to be put in their lives. Here and let the scripture read it. The words of the Lord, we honor it when it takes glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the name of now and in the shadow of the world, and so on. Amen. We have our third hymn, Amazing Grace.
all the jobs and the gladiators, regardless of the circumstances and the situation that we are in the house of God, let us give God thanks and praise. I know that the families and the friends are going through a rough time, but I encourage you to trust in the Lord because God knows best. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We will go to the special tribunes before we go to the open tribune. And we will have a special tribune by Patrick Spillage. Amen. 
here to pay tribute to their loved ones, so sometimes they're going to break down by the way. But we have to encourage them because this is where we have to say. Some of us who go and choose them like this before, we know that it is not an easy task. We will now have another trip.
Chair of the program just a little bit and call Melissa Blinji to bring us a special tribute. I'm reading this tribute on behalf of Altenius Mom. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to say a few words about my daughter Altenia. But firstly, I want to say a heartfelt thank you to everyone for support and well wishes during this extremely difficult time for my family. My dear Altavia, as much as it hurts me to write these words, it hurts me even more having to say goodbye to you today. But I know your soul is at rest and you are in a better place. The longest conversation Altavia and I had over the phone was when she called me on her last birthday in December. She was so excited. She called me at 2 a.m. and we talked until 5 a.m. that morning. Our last conversation was on my birthday in January when she called me. The last thing she said to me was, I will call you. Altavia, Altavia. Altavia, so much I want to say, so much memories. I remember that Friday you came into this world. I left Chester for Byron to have you and was back in an hour and a half. It was such a happy day for me. Altavia was always a happy child from childhood to adulthood. She was always smiling and laughing. She, uh, she was always a joy to be around. Her boys were her world. Her eldest son, Liam, even though they were miles away, she always assisted him with his schoolwork and made sure he did his homework, made sure he did his homework. She made sure to maintain their communication. Anywhere you see Tavia, you see Joshua. I know you love your children dearly. I promise you, I will do my be very best for them, for they are now mine, and they will never lack as long as I am able. Just please watch over them in places I may not be present, and don't worry about anything, they will be okay. You will always be my daughter. I will always love you forever. Rest in eternal peace. Your father's cry is all mother's cry. We will have another special tribute from Rosamond Chris. Rosamond Chris. We will go to the eulogy by this is Jack, that was Jack. Three children. 
she was preceded by her older brother, Ulrich, and followed by her younger sister, Tony. Although her father had many other children older than her, she was the first daughter for both of her parents. Altavia, as, Tavia, as she was affectionately called, attended the Pamela's Government School, and after the common entrance exam, she pursued secondary education at the Georgetown Secondary School. During her short time at the secondary school, her closest ally was her younger sister, Carisha, who played the reverse role of big sister. They looked out for each other. Tavia was very manly and humble, never one who liked conflict and always chose the side of peace. Therefore, when, she quarreled, when they quarreled or had any misunderstanding, she would be the first to extend the olive branch. She was bullied a lot in school and Carisha did her best to shield her from such. Her mom migrated to Trinidad when she was in Form 1, and Tavia felt her world was taken away. She stayed behind with her dad, Errol, better known as Pro, during this time. Ida sent for Tavia in Trinidad in 2008, when she was 14 years old. Because they were not citizens in that country, it was extremely hard for Tavia to get into a school to finish her secondary education. Her mother worked very hard during doing domestic work and sometimes multiple jobs to provide support. In 2010, she was able to enroll in the Malik Youth Development Training Center for one year where she learned skills as a nail technician and also completed several courses in food preparation. During this time, she met a young man named Leandro Roberts. Not long after completing her course, she gave birth to her firstborn, Leon Roberts, who is now 10 years old. When baby Leon was less than one year, in 2013, 19-year-old Altavia got her first job at the children's center as a preschool teacher. Her humble spirit and mild temperament was what people loved most about her, and especially her smile. Tavia returned home to St. Vincent in 2015 with her mom and her son, Leon, after spending seven and a half years in Trinidad. In less than a year, Leon returned to Trinidad, and in January of 2016, her second son, Dimal, or Joshua, was born. Tavia loved her children and did everything she could for them. She returned to Trinidad in 2019, so Leon could meet his baby brother, but she only stayed there for six months. She made sure she called her son in Trinidad as often as she could. And she made sure he did his homework and complete any school activities. She even sent her own homework so he can do them and send them back for her to mark. So great was her love for them that you seldom saw Tavia without the mall. She took him almost everywhere she went, except when he was in school. She tried to bring him up in a good way despite all her challenges, and as such, the mall is a manly child who is loved by everyone, especially his teachers. She loved her mother dearly, for Ida was her rock. She knew she had a mother who would go above and beyond to see that her needs were met. 
She also tried to stay in touch with family members in SVG and overseas, including her mom, her sisters, brothers, aunts, numerous cousins and friends via social media, and visiting her grandfather, now deceased, in Sandy Bay whenever she could. Her favorite cousin was Nataki. Altavia met Barnett Richards a very, at a very young age. This was at a time when Bonnet had lost her nephew, Vovo, a sweet little boy in a road traffic accident about 18 years ago. Despite their difference in age, Bonnet became her best friend, her confidant. The two would hang out every chance they get, especially on weekends and holidays. They would talk for hours on the phone. When difficulties arose in her last relationship and when she was asked to leave, she naturally went to stay with Vaughn. The beach was her haven, her safe place to go when she wanted to relax and get away from the stresses of life. It was the last place she visited before she met her tragic demand. Altavia was quiet, manly, very friendly, even though she was very shy. As a child, she would go to the spiritual Baptist church with her mom from time to time and loved to tie her head in like manner as she got older. She always had a smile. She would not pass you on the street without saying hello. Even if you didn't see her, she would call to you. As a young teenager, she suffered many things in silence. She forgave easily and would find it hard to hold a grudge against anyone, even those who hurt her. Also, as a teenager, she was baptized in her early teens as at the Georgetown Christian Church where she went with her father before she went home. As an adult, she learned the value of family and good friendship to communicate her thoughts and feelings on various platforms. Altavia leaves to mourn beside her parents, her siblings. She has her son, Leon Roberts, and Josh Robinji. Sisters Harisha and Tony, brothers Ulrich, better known as Butter, Kensley James, Ken God Woods, and Enrique Fraser. The Bilingi families and Andrews families of Chester Cottage, Byra, and Park Hill. Also Malik and Digo Martin in Trinidad. This concludes the chapter of Altavia's life here on this side. A word. Life is short. I would like to leave this scripture with all of us. It is from Psalm 119 verse 9. It says, Wherewithal should a young man or woman cleanse his or her way, but by taking heed to the word of God. May your soul we now go straight into open tribute. I know a lot of us here will like to say something about Antavia because she was a very good girl to the community and the one who gets into contact with her. But as we know, it is a funeral service and everybody will not be able to give a tribute. So we are going to open a tribute. Good afternoon again, everybody. 
I am going to do a tribute. This is actually by her younger sister, Tonique. I'm going to attempt to play a pre-recorded message. And if for some reason that doesn't do justice because of the audio, I will read it. Tonique wanted nothing more than to be here today. And I know her heart is breaking. That's how we here today. Mary, before me. Yeah. 
as I heard her cousin say, but I have no her, but no her for a very short time, about over six to five years ago. Everything has been said here, what I listen to, is truly true. I know sometimes when you have dinner, they just come up, things are going, you see that there? This not come up. I said, natural thing when I say, I will tell you. Tina will always smile. It doesn't matter what you say to her, it doesn't matter what you do. She will smile at you. I have a conversation with her and, <coughs> and um, the word that she used, it was very nice what she said. When we talked, she said, but you mean to say, the, the, the man take care of me. And I said, truly, the man really take care of me. I'm saying this to say that she is gone. And it is appointed all to man to die, wants to die, okay? I'm saying this to say nobody has the time of death in their heart. Because if I or you have the time in death, we will do everything which is possible. You understand? Nobody knows she was going. She, she herself even knows she was going. Anyway, make story short. Her son came up from church, from school yesterday. And I was home, down by the house. And he ran up and he said, Is it a Christy? Is it a Christy girl in the house there now? And he said, Make a way in. He said, No, I'm running away. What I'm saying to say, he's so, he's so happy and innocent. Like the, the poor boy don't even know what's going on. You understand? I'm saying this to say also. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, I don't have to look up. I will stay there. And I will wave my hand if I'm driving. If I go driving, I'll, I'll look up to see. Otherwise, I'll go my way. Stay there. Rest in peace. May God bless you.
we'll take two more tributes.
breaks her heart, not being here for her friend, Tavia. So she asked me to do this poem on her behalf. Words cannot describe the pain I feel saying farewell to you. Memories of a friendship and what we've been through. I wish that we could have had more time that God had let you stay. Forever would not be enough, but I would take one day. Months we've lived together, I wish I had just one more chance to see your tender smile. From that day you left, there's, on, there's an empty place in my heart. Just want you to know that you are more than just a friend. Gone too soon, but not forgotten. Forever you will remain my guiding light, my shining star. Fly high, my friend, and keep watching over me. Rest in peace, Tavia. Today is such a painful day, full of sadness and grief for us. As we mourn the moment you left, recalling how life used to be. You are someone very special. You left a man on so many lives. Things just haven't been the same from the day we said goodbye. The bond we shared will never end, even though we are apart. We find comfort in the memories deep within our hearts. This heartful message is for you. We miss you more than words can say. The world lost someone precious the day we went away. Tavia was just was my friend. Tavia was my right hand. There was nothing I did without Tavia's approval. Tavia was my hairdresser. Tavia was just everything to me. The day Tavia passed away, we went on the beach together and we were just so happy. I used to turn to Tavia and I said, no. When I get the bar next year, I went to Yuki for church because I'm always late. So I know you will reach in time. She told me, she said, Tell me when I come to I will call you. When I went to work that night, I couldn't have better go to Tavia. I tried my best. I don't know how to go to Tavia. Good morning. I got the news that a young lady passed away. I never knew that it was my friend. I never knew that my friend was gone. I never knew that that 12 o'clock when I left her on the beach would have been my last. Tell me, I love you. I think it's so much. Wow. 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 In our family, we tend to have favorites, and Tavia was mine as well. When I have my kids, she and Premise will fight because of the competition to see who will hold chain and who hoops. My family don't in Ataki, they usually say Nana. So, if I have anything to do, I'll take on my phone and say, Tavia, I had this to do or not. Nana, Nana, Rory, myself, no, just jack them pick. That was she. Tavia, I can't remember Tavia ever getting into a fight. I know my family members. When they say something to us, we moved already. And I go say, Tavia, you know me, they said, grand pick me. Because you tell her anything, ah, we always ready. Tavia was quiet, humble, kind, loving, and sweet. And I know it's hard for us to never see you again, but that day will come. Tavia, I will do everything in my power to look after Timal like you would have done hopes and cheer. And to this day we are putting you to rest. But I love you and I will live with your memories in my heart. Sleep in peace, David. Bless the Lord. I knew Tavia. Tavia was my friend. Tavia never caught in the village to talk. She passed in the road. There's no way, there's no way. Even if I come out, Tavia never did. 
Tabia was a good friend to my daughter. They used to be in the house together, Crystal. And we have the privilege of worshiping with Tavia many times in our church when Crystal invited her to come to church with her. After all is being said and done, we give the tribute. Everybody talk about what they have known about Tavia. Let us lift our voices and sing and rejoice and be glad because you know Tavia is not an art anymore to pay the bills, to go to the Machayas and the Mount Tribulation. And despite of the sad way that she went, we give God thanks and praise. Christ is getting us ready for the great
Sebastian.
regardless of the circumstances and the situation that has brought us here, God is good. God is still God. He is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. He promised to be our provider, our keeper, our savior, our protector, and God does not go back on his words. God does not go back on his words. So we need to rejoice and be glad in the Lord. Let us welcome our Archbishop John Jones to bring us some word of comfort and upliftment to our hearts and our soul. Welcome our Archbishop. Yo. 
Jesus. And at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. We cannot be at the right hand just like that. You have to compare yourself to be there with him. The word of God said there is an appointment. When persons get in marriage, they make preparation. Besides marriage, when Christmas comes, you make preparation. And the housewife, which is numerous in here, they have to make preparation for Sunday dinner. So when we have to travel abroad, we have to make preparation. We don't want to miss that appointment to go for the visit or to check the doctor. So some persons couldn't even sleep the night. So, so it is when we have to serve God, let us prepare ourselves to serve Him. And it is not when, but we have to serve God. Because His coming is true. Tavia was, was in life. And Tavia lived a good life. I don't believe Tavia thinks about dying today. When they call, we answer. Regardless of our status, we have to answer. Some persons have money, but they can't buy life. One writer said, it is fair for us to rise up early, yes. sit up late, yes. and eat the bread of sorrow. Yes. And then, and then depart from me. I want to come, I'm coming because I want to live with him. In so doing, I am making preparation to live with him. I'm encouraging all of us, let us prepare ourselves to be with the Lord. Because we don't want to live with the devil and his angel. And if we just make that preparation, we are surely going to live with him. We are in the last day to sing God praises. It is time that we look up for redemption right now. Brothers and sisters, signs of time are right here. Some of us wait a long while for Christmas to come. But now Christmas comes by the snap of the finger. I said this to say that prophecies are to fulfill. I didn't say it, but the word of God said, I am going to shorten the days for the elect sin. Therefore, the days are shorter. And when we see these things, the word of God said we are to look up for redemption right now. To take the family, take this as a stepping stone to go closer to God. When somebody dies, it is important that we do some introspection, so searching, because these things make us amend our ways and our doings. I said us, because all of us. When they come, pastor have to die. Mommy have to die. Every one of us have to die. And when they leave us, judgment is sure to fight. Let us make preparation. Because there is a set time for all of us. The word of God said it's appointed unto man. Wants to die. But after death, he done. The word never said that. He said after death, comes the judgment. After death is when Johnny Jones has to stand before God. After death is when Mr. Jews have to stand
stand up before God? What you standing there for? To answer for your sins, your deeds. To answer. Remember, he's an unseen eyes watching over us. So what I can hide from the Archbishop? I can't hide from God, he know it. Even before I do it, he know it. So you, yourself, take stock of your life. Today, many people cry out, it's hard time. It is hard time for us to think Jesus is coming again. Signs and wonders are showing everywhere. So I'm encouraging us, brothers and sisters, to come to Jesus. Those of you who are loyal, get to know him. But he's because he's sweeter than the day before. The Andrews family, Billingy family, stay close to Christ. Come close to Christ. This is a sign for you all to look up for redemption joy night. Mommy can't save you. Daddy can't save you. Not even the pastor can. Only Christ can. So go to him. Go to God and he will save you. This evening, I have my Archbishop here with me and I want to allow him to step me forth in the name of Jesus. Archbishop of the Lord. I am going home. Yes, I am going home. Yes, Our dear beloved sister 
is gone. But you exist and you are dependent on the grace of God for perseverance, for preservation, and also for knowing. You hear, we began, I am going home. There is nothing to hold me here. You heard a testimony or tribute earlier when one person said that they were together that day. I am sure there were many plans that were ahead for this life. But I want to remind you as Sister uh, began the, the hymn by saying eternity. I want to remind you the purpose for you and I being here. You see, God, we should not have known that. That is a result of sin. God made us perfect. He breathed into us his own self, the breath of life. That breath cannot dissipate. It cannot die. That which we have created by sinfulness, which is mortality, shall go back to its kindred dust. But the spirit which God had breathed into us shall live on forever. Whether it will be with the Lord or in condemnation, it must live on forever. Therefore, the question that was asked, where will I spend eternity? That is the question. So, uh, someone's exhortation or meditation, whatever we may call it, is not for the dead. It is for the living. You see, since we all must travel this journey, we must make, as the, as, as the Archbishop said a while ago, preparation. And this question must be continually in our mind. Where do I go from here? Where will I spend? my eternity. It is not a question for those out there. It's a personal question. It's personal. You see, when this body returned to its kindred dust or rejoined its kindred dust, mortality ceased. But the spirit which I spoke of earlier, which was breathing to you, that God gifted spirit, you will have to account for. So we're going to talk about a gap. You born, then you die. But there's something that happened between birth and death. That is what you will be accounted for. That is called the gap. Are you sure about your present state of being? Being religious is not the answer. Being a regular church core is not the answer. Singing and praising is not the answer. What is your present state of being? The question is, where will you spend eternity? Today, lies before us is an emblem of ourselves. This is who we are. This is what we surely will become. The pretty face the intellect, Hallelujah. how much letters behind your name, That's right. oh, the association you enjoy, all that is this. Mortality.
immortality. It ceased there. The things that were said nicely about you, the praises that you worked for, the positions you destroyed us for. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is where it ends. Where will you spend your eternity? I want to challenge you here today that as our sister become an emblem of who we are, that we take what stock of ourselves. That we become conscious that this is not the end. And if the Lord, as we live here, and our number called, before I said, I want to tell you a story. I was traveling to Trinidad with, we were going to Trinidad on a mission, uh, official thing, not the preaching one. Yes. And we got to the airport. You all must be familiar with this name. Uh, Shepherd Kalindo. Yeah, he, he had all the videos of himself. And both of us were going to Trinidad on this mission. We got there, before we got there at the airport, I had my number for my seat. Other delegates had their numbers for the seat. And when we were in the dining hall, I wanted to know where he was sitting. Because I was sitting in business class, so I want to know how I can meet him while we're on the four-hour ride to discuss. Be warned and be aware. When I asked him what is the seat and he looked on his ticket, there was no number. He didn't have a number seat on the plane, yet he had a boarding pass. I said, you must have a seat to get on that plane. If you don't, then go to the um, counter and let them know and let them give you a number. Do you know what happened? His number was called. That's why it was vacant. As we got to Trinidad, <laughs> and we were, we met with the dignitaries, the ministry, the other people and so on. We went to the VIP lounge and we we're coming back for an exhibition in the airport. <laughs> he collapsed. And that was him. His number was called. He did not know. I knew there was a vacancy on the boarding pass, but I didn't know that his number was called. What about your number? Are you sure <laughs> your boarding pass has a number? So today, you are asked to look within your mirrored self and say, if it was I who lie here without a number, when the day of accountability comes, Will I be accounted for good? The question is yours to answer. May God bless you as this faithful soul rejoin her eternal spirit. God bless you. Thank you, our dear Bishop Harry. You will now call the family for prayer.
there be the man born in his mouth with them anymore in the flesh. We pray, O oh God, that, that you will comfort them. That you will reward them. You will bring joy.
I can't remember you, Phillips. <laughs> Grammar school. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't forget my students so easy. <laughs>
Yeah, they still there, Jack. Show me this one. Come in. You don't reach my yeah, I'm in high room. Shut this one. I hope you have me on film, man. Yes, <laughs> I, and I just have you said what you said there. Oh. All over the wall, it reads. Oh, All right. <laughs> Oh, boy, no. 
For as much as it has pleased Almighty God of His great mercy to receive unto Himself the soul of our beloved sister, Alvedia, here departed. We therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who shall change our earthly body, that it may be like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty work in here. He is able to subdue all And I heard a voice from heaven say, write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord henceforth. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor, for their deeds do follow them. Go forth upon thy journey from this world, O Christian soul, in the peace of him in whom thou hast believed, in the name of God the Father, who created thee, in the name of Jesus Christ who suffered for thee, in the name of the Holy Spirit who strengthened thee, may angels and archangels and all the armies of the heavenly host come to meet thee. May thy portion this day be gladness and peace, and thy dwelling in paradise. Go forth upon thy journey, O Christian soul. Let us pray. All glory and thanksgiving be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, in thy mercy, dost give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. We bless thee for that victory over death and gave he which had obtained for us and for all who rest in him. And we pray thee to keep us in fellowship with all who wait for thee on earth and with all the company of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all both now and forever. Amen. Yes. <laughs>
Ei! Não vai dar um chegar, não vai ficar.